Hello, my name is Dr. Gray, and this is segment three uh, for the information for metacognition. Uh, this segment deals with one of the most popular strategies uh, used by students. It's called Grandma's Recipe for Accountable uh, Learning and Time Management. Uh, this is a piece of work that includes myself as well as Dr. Sandra McGuire from Louisiana State University and also Dr. Mickey Powell here at the University of Alabama where I am as well. So this strategy Grandma's Recipe for Accountable Learning and Time Management. Uh, as I said before, this is one of the most popular strategies. Students give us a lot of feedback telling us that it really does uh, help with organization, but outside of that, also reducing that whole deal of stress and, and anxiety right before an exam. A little bit about the name of this strategy. I know it sounds a little weird. Grandma's Recipe. The reason why this is part of the title, when you think about a grandma's recipe, for me, my grandmother made the best apple turnovers in the world. And that's you know, according to me, that's very personal, it's very unique, and you know, it's very personalized for me. For you, it may be chocolate chip cookies or sugar cookies, but that's personal for you. So this particular strategy is the exact same thing. It is so personal to the student that actually implements it, okay? For accountable learning, this particular strategy helps this helps you to be a very accountable student for your own learning in ways that you just cannot even imagine. And then of course there is a time management component and as we go through this this strategy you'll see that in great detail. And this, this is the part that actually helps to reduce the stress and anxiety that lots of students have when it comes to uh, preparing for an exam that has a large amount of information on it, especially something like freshman biology. But you can actually tweak this to entertain other um, courses as well, okay, according to, you know, what type of material it is and what's the time frame in which you have to entertain it. And you'll see here at the bottom in yellow, students always feel better when they have a plan no matter the age or grade level. That is so true. When you think about it, when you have a plan for something, you feel so much better than if you have no plan. So this is a plan. This is a plan that can be implemented um, for material for a particular course to actually reduce your stress and anxiety level. Okay, what does this recipe involve? What does this strategy involve? Well, there are two main things that you're gonna to have to have. First is the course syllabus and a course calendar. These two usually come hand in hand, but we'll talk about the differences between the two. You'll need whatever book it is that you have for the course. The examples I have here are biology, but it could be any book. It could be your math book, psychology, um, history, you know, whatever book it is that you are using for the course. You're gonna need a blank calendar page with about 30 to 31 days. And all you have on there is just the day of the week, nothing else, no month or anything like that, just a blank calendar, because we're gonna talk about the value of writing these components down. And then finally, there will need to be some type of an electronic component where you can actually transpose that information into something like Google Calendar, where you can add and delete pretty easily and also put in the other variables of your life as well, you know, like other classes, whether you're working or whatever those variables may be. Okay, so this is an example of what a course syllabus looks like. Of course, if you're a student looking at this, you're very familiar with what a syllabus looks like. But the syllabus itself will basically have the um, policies and procedures, the housekeeping information for the course, but more importantly, the information for the instructor is there. It tells you what days of the week the course is going to reside on and what the time frames are and a slew of other policies and procedures that are associated with it. The other example is a course calendar. This is an example of a course calendar from a freshman biology course. What we mean by calendar is that if you'll notice in yellow and green, You'll see the dates of when the course, uh, the class is going to meet, what topics will be discussed on that day, right? What homework is relevant to that information and when it is due. 
also that second column has the chapter in the book where you can find that information. So this course calendar is crucial to actually developing and implementing the grandma's recipe. So you'll see at the top an example as to how this strategy works. So what I have done is I've actually pulled each of those out into a separate um, slide. So the very first question that's going to be used to format this calendar or this strategy, you're going to have to be very familiar with your syllabus and this course calendar. The first thing you want to assess is how many days calendar days there are from the first day of instruction for a particular unit. So say we're talking about exam one and on this calendar exam one is in the color yellow and it's chapters two through seven. The first day of instruction is August 23rd. The day of the exam, exam one, is on September 27th. So we use <clears throat> this body to demonstrate 33 days, okay? So from the first day of lecture to the day of the exam. For you, for a different course, it may be 20 days, it may be 15 days, whatever those days are, you need to assess those and write that down. So 33 days. The next question is how many chapters are going to be on this assessment? It could be two chapters, it could be 10, and in this instance, there are actually six chapters that are going to be on the exam. This is important to know because transitioning from high school to college, most exams are usually one to two chapters. Having six exams on one chapter is not something that most incoming students are used to. So we have got to get in that mode of organizing this information before we just dig into it, right? Okay, so for this example, there are six chapters. The next part of the strategy is probably the most difficult for students to first of all understand and also to actually do, right, to implement. What happens here is that you're going to rank your chapters or bodies of information, if it doesn't have chapter numbers, according to difficulty. This is that uniqueness part, okay, because I can't do it, your teacher can't do it, your instructor, whomever, because you know how long it takes you to process information. You know whether or not you have to read things two or three times. You know whether or not you're going to need an audio component or whether or not you need to highlight or you need to read. You know your parameters or you should know. And if you don't know, you want to kind of assess that before you do this part to figure out exactly of these 33 days in this example, you know, and of these chapters, how difficult is it going to be for me to try to assess, I mean, or understand? The question I always get is, Dr. Gray, how is it that I'm going to rank chapters that I haven't even read yet? How am I going to do that? Well, using the biology course as an example, the book that's used for this course, when you start looking at these chapters, just flipping through, you're going to know immediately which ones are going to be more difficult. Because if we have a chapter about chemistry, if you're not, you know, too, too great on chemistry, that's going to be a struggle for you. You know, well, maybe we have a chapter on sales. You're good on that, right? You're better than you are on chemistry. So that's what I mean by actually looking at the titles of these chapters, kind of skimming through them, looking at what the summaries are, looking at the amount of information that is there for each of those chapters. And on your own, according According to your own abilities, just rank them. It doesn't have to be perfect, okay, because this will very quickly become a sliding scale. We're going to talk about that. So just, you know, to your best ability, rank your chapters. The example that I have here of those six chapters, you'll see that the first chapter that I put up is chapter five. I ranked it as the most difficult because it has the most amount of information and uh, there are lots of, of difficult concepts in that particular chapter, so I ranked it as number one. I ranked chapter six as the least difficult because I know the most about that set of information. It is sales, their structures, and, and how they function. I learned a lot of that stuff in middle school, a lot of it in high school, so I'm, I'm okay with that. But then you see other things in the middle, 
lots of chemistry stuff not so good on. So that's what I mean by ranking according to difficulty. Now this will be a little different for other disciplines. And so you'll kind of have to tweak that a little bit according to what course you're actually trying to fit this into. Once the ranking is done, okay, now comes another part that's super important. You have to be very realistic with this particular part of the strategy. You need to decide how many days of the calculated days, which is 33, how many of those days am I going to assign to each of these chapters according to the difficulties that I've ranked them in? So of whatever the number of days that you are given, you're going to use all of those days except for the last two. And we're going to talk about the importance of those last two days. So the example that I have here, I've ranked my chapters according to difficulty, uh, one through six, and I've assigned days, eight days for chapter five of the 33 versus three days for chapter six, which I ranked as the least most difficult that I think, you know, uh, according to what I have here. So those days added up are 31 days. And you'll notice that these days are going to include the weekends as well. Okay, so we're talking about full calendar days here. So I've got 31 of my 33 days accounted for. The beauty of this is that, say for instance, you assess eight days for chapter five. And, or, well, let's start with chapter two. You have six days assessed. Well, when you start looking at the information and you say, well, gosh, I really don't need six days for chapter two. I'm, I'm at a point now where I really understand this. I'm able to tie it into chapter three. So these extra three days I have for chapter two, I'm going to put those over onto chapter three. Well, maybe when you get to chapter three, you say, I have five days already assessed for chapter three. Maybe I don't need all of these days for chapter three. Maybe I can put some more on chapter five or chapter six. So that's what we mean by a sliding scale. If this is done at the beginning of instruction and you're using all the time that you have, you'll have time to throw in days for maybe a little bit of review. Maybe it's a day of only visual um, um, entertainment as far as the information is concerned. And you have other variables as well other courses, maybe you're working, maybe you're taking care of, you know, a six sibling, you know, anything else, all the other variables of life. So this is how, uh, how it works and what we mean by it becoming a sliding scale. This is the example of a blank calendar, okay? And you'll notice on this particular representation of the calendar, I just simply went through and put the chapters on there for the amount of days that I specified. Now, initially the calendar will look like this, just so that you can see the spread that's there. If you're not gonna include weekends, then you need to make the atonement for that uh, on your calendar, but everything has to be accounted for. You'll notice that the last two days, there is nothing there as far as material, and we're gonna talk about why that is important. So to have a study calendar that looks like this is not enough. You can't just simply write chapter two or chapter three or chapter four. The beauty of this and the meat of this is the detail that you add to your calendar. Say, for instance, on one of the days where you're going to look at chapter two, you need to be very specific about what you're going to entertain in chapter two for that day. So you'll see here I have covalent bonds, ionic bonds, hydrogen bonds. Also there are some videos that are associated with these bonds. There are some voiceovers. There is a portion in the book that needs to be read. And so that's what I mean by specificity. Exactly how are you going to entertain the information for say chapter two on this day? There is great value and writing this detail because it kind of gives you a checking off system and you can actually see, hey, I still have these major parts for this chapter that I need to do. You'll see there in red, I put, I have about 1.5 hours available total for this particular course on this day. This is where the reality comes. 
you must be realistic about the time frame that you have for entertaining information. You don't want to do, you know, ridiculous things like say, oh, I'm going to study this information for four hours today. You know, that's that's not a good plan to have. So you want to be realistic about the time frame that you're going to allow. Once you have done this on paper and you have this written out or typed up, the next part of it is electronic input. So when you take this information and put it into something like Google Calendar, now you can add and delete pretty easily. You can actually put in the other variables of life in there, right? Your work schedule or whatever it is that you have to do so that you can truly see how much time do I actually have? And so when you put in your projected time and you put in your other variables where I have, I have an hour and a half, I may only have an hour or I may only have 30 minutes that day. But over on this day, I actually have two hours that I can entertain it. So sliding scale implementation in the electronic form so that you can get a very detailed view of how you're going to entertain the information. Now, this is not an easy strategy by any means. It involves a lot of work and a lot of detail, but you would be amazed at how students respond to this strategy. I actually have some student testimonials about this particular strategy. It may be a little difficult to see, but you'll see how they talk about how their first uh, score was a certain, you know, average and it wasn't well. They actually started implementing uh, the strategies and they got wonderful results. Of all the comments and feedback from students, the number one feedback says, I wish that I had learned this strategy so that I could have changed my behavior way before I came to college. Where was this in high school? The second thing that we hear is that this strategy helped me to be able to pull out the key points of the information myself. I no longer had to rely even though it wasn't even available on a study guide to do this, I can now read through information and decide what is the most important thing uh, from this body of information. What is it that I should be taking away from this? Uh, they also say that these strategies worked in other courses outside of biology with a little bit of tweaking because, you know, courses are not going to be exactly the same. But just the behavior carries over to other courses and it definitely helps uh, students to not be in that mode of cramming trying to learn large amounts of information in a very short period of time and of course uh, you know students say that their grades increased and of course you know that is the final um, uh, product that we want is to not only be uh, a, a better learner but to also have uh, excellent marks on your assessments.